So you've completed your route and you're now at Crota. Crota is going to be one of the biggest challenges you face in pretty much any raid in Destiny, but it is achievable. At the very beginning, you're going to find yourself in a center room where everyone has to get right next to this crystal to spawn in Crota. Once that happens, you will be, have your fire team divide into teams, three going right and three going left. There's a bunch of ads through a corridor. Go ahead and kill those. You're going to have two people who are going to be on boomer duty. That is basically the two towers that you used previously for killing witches. We'll have two boomers that are not behind shields. The reason for this will come clear in a minute. For everyone else, everyone else is on the ad duty. For the most part, for protection purposes, you want to probably gather in one central area where you can see most of the ads, but also be available to pass a chalice around and do other things during the encounter. Utilizing protection buffs, wells, and things like that will be very helpful during this encounter. For our fire team, we gather in this area at the bottom where you can actually stash and preserve the chalice at the end of the counter if you need to. There is a witch there. We use the well to kind of protect ourselves and again, take the witch out. So someone's gonna need to get the chalice, but the chalice is gonna be a little bit different this time. While you need the chalice to pick up swords and do other things in the activity, you're also going to not only be able to exchange a chalice in one of five areas are lit up. Basically those areas look like a little bit of light and you'll see that there are two around the main plate in the center of the arena and then there are three that will show up three or four i don't remember the exact number but that show up in the area on the floor and again you'll see them because they look like a little bit of light those are the only places that you can exchange the chalice to end up getting the enlightened buff you'll need the enlightened buff to obviously pick up swords but you also need to take down the oversoul so that's one thing to keep in mind so determine how many swords you want to use against crota add one for the oversoul and then that's the number of people that you need to use to do that. Now, keep in mind, because of that, because there's a timer in this encounter, you have to decide how much time you're going to invest in getting as many swords as possible before you run into the white mechanic that wipes your fire team. And at the end, what you're going to want to do is whatever that number is. If it's, if it's one sword, you're going to need one person for the sword, one person for the oversoul. At that point, you go and you have the other person who picked up the chalice go and stash in that area where we began. While you're doing this, there's some other mechanics that have to happen because you need to get the swords. To get the swords, you're going to have to have the boomers killed. When the boomers are killed, so you want to time this. When the boomers are killed, you at that point are going to spawn some ogres, some witches, and also the sword bearer. They're all very chunky, so just keep that in mind. But again, because of that, you're going to probably want to wait until you get at least one person with lightning before you drop those so you can get the swords available for the people with the enlightened buffs. So with that all in mind, that's how you set up DPS. So let me give you some tips. Again, pick a spot where you, most of your fire team can control ads and protect themselves. If it's possible, use a Titan with Stronghold to block Crota. So Crota will basically be moving around the arena, but with Stronghold and with a good sword like Lament or something like that, you can constantly block. And if you're blocking, Crota will sit there, it'll protect you. Crota will slam on you constantly, but he'll ignore the rest of the fire team. So that's a really useful thing to use if you potentially have it. When you're getting ready to take the shield down, there's a couple things. Now, some of this is going to be relevant for contest mode. Some of it you might not need later on. A couple things that are going to help you is that when you have him distracted, he will slam. At that point, what you're going to want to do is the minute he slams, have your person who have your people who have their swords ready, have a person with well, have a person with tractor. What we did is we used one of the people that were clearing the boomers to do that. So come down, he slams, have the people have the swords start wailing on him. Obviously, use liberally the super attack, use your heavy attacks, whatever you can do to get him going. You're going to want to do that, again, while he's distracted with the stronghold guy. Before you did that, you needed to go ahead and use the tractor cannon on him to put that debuff on him. After you do that for a little bit, then put the well down. The reason is, is if Crota slams again, at least as of right now, that slam will take the well out. You're gonna to wanna to maximize how much damage you're doing to a shield. With this, you should be able to use two swords with a tractor with a well and take his shield down. But again, a lot of this is gonna depend on the ability of your fire team and also your coordination. Again, the biggest thing you have to keep in mind is you can do this with one sword at a time, but then you're gonna to have to do this before the oversoul appears. You can do this with two swords or three swords, but three swords are gonna take longer. So again, just work with your fire team to figure out the most effective way for how your fire team operates. Once you're done with this, it'll be DPS time. During DPS, one of the, a couple things that are effective is obviously using wells, using debuffs like tether or tractor, obviously close in weapons like lament or other swords, Acreus works really well. Again, and if you have DPS supers, use those as well. So 
This is very heavy, a warlock fight in the fact that you need a lot of protection, but things like Gathering Storm with Hunter, um, you can also use Burning Maul to kind of hold them in place. All those things are effective strategies for trying to get through Crota. DPS is timed, so you're going to have, to, and the way it's timed is you have an Oversoul that if you don't shoot it will, will wipe the fire team. The Oversoul also is fairly weak, so just a few fusion shots will take it down. So wait towards the end of the Oversoul counter and go ahead and shoot it. Some people would say start five because you have delays between host and when you hear things on mic. But again, that's up to you and how you want to do it according to your fire team. But when you do the Oversoul, that will end the DPS phase. So it's up to you how you balance risk and reward. At that point, you just rinse and repeat. You're going to have a few cycles to do this before he gets an enraged mechanic. He also has a last stand. During his last stand, a couple things are going to happen. And a lot of fire teams have left a little bit of, of last DPS on him before they get to that last stand. So you're going to do that, whatever that amount is. He will go immune at that point. That immune period is a good time to go gather ammo and prepare for, you know, taking him out. At that point, continue to wail on him, doing DPS. And just keep in mind, towards the end of that, there will be another Oversoul that shows up. Shoot that, that gives you about, I think, 10 more seconds to finish up, and then you're complete with the encounter. If you're struggling with damage, another thing you can do is if you have more people on Enlightened, you can also use that to do the Expunge on Crota, which will give you some additional damage. And that's the video, guys. Hopefully it's helpful. If it is, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.